Hello everybody. So in the last video we set up uh, partitions and calling search spaces so that we can call other phones within our system. That's a great start but it really doesn't do us a lot of good. Um, it gets more exciting once you're calling outside of the system and taking calls. So to do that we are going to need a voice gateway. And that sounds intimidating and this used to be kind of a problem because you would have to go out and buy a voice router. But I found a solution that um, will get around that. Once again, you're gonna need a Cisco account and I'll put the link in the tab, but we can actually download a virtual router from Cisco. And here is the link, um, I pulled it up. You, Like I said, you'll need a Cisco account and your entitlements might be different, um, but I believe there is at least one version that will be available for you to download. Um, and as always, I would be surprised um, if these images aren't out there on the web somewhere for you to download. Um, so the ones that I downloaded were the OVA and the ISO. So the, I believe CSR stands for Cloud, Ser yeah, Cloud Service Router 1000V. Um, so I downloaded the ISO and the OVA. Um, those are pretty decent sized files. They're like 500 megabytes a piece. So that might take a little bit. And um, I have ESXi 6.5 running on an old crusty uh, desktop that I got from Facebook. I covered that installation in detail in an earlier video in this series. This might also work in VMware Player. I'm not sure. If you can get that working, uh, great. Otherwise, if you have the opportunity to make ESXi um, Lab, I highly recommend that. It just makes things easier. Um, your machines don't lose connectivity when you have to reboot your own personal computer. It's, it's just a lot nicer. Um, so I got those, uh, <coughs> those that image and the OVA downloaded, and I uploaded that ISO to my data store. So you can see he's got the CSR 1000V Universal there already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Virtual Machines and right click that and Create Register VM. And I will deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or OVA template. And let's see, downloads. Here is the OVA. And I'm going to call this Lab cube 01 next selects the data store automatically I'm just gonna leave that exactly how it is next it says a required disk image is missing um, so that is where the ISO will come in and I'm just gonna go ahead and click finish okay Lab Cube 01, so I am going to click on that, edit it, and now you can see down here CD, DVD, Drive 1, Data Store, ISO file connected. So that's all good, but we need to make sure that we put that image in there. And it has something in there already, but um, it didn't find that in the OVA, so I downloaded the ISO and now that's what I'm gonna select. So going back into that data store that I just showed you, we'll go to the ISO folder that I created and choose that image. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And it looks like it powered on automatically. Let me just make sure that those settings stayed in there. Uh, yes, and it looks like they did. So I'm going to power that back on, and I think we're going to see the router booting this time. Yep. And I'm going to open the console. and that is starting. So that will take a couple minutes. I'm just gonna let that boot. I'll pause this and resume when it is back. Okay, and we are up. The router started. Um, there were a couple things. I think it said NVRAM, NVRAM failed to initialize, but then it just kept going, and it looked like there were a couple options. I didn't choose anything, and then it just times out and keeps going. So you can probably just 
let it run, um, and then once you, after a while, um, you can just press enter when you start to see some of the messages like this about call home, um, and then you will see the uh, the um, command prompt. So we are right at a completely unconfigured router, which is pretty amazing. So this is a virtual machine running right next to my call manager. Um, this is great. This saves time, energy, and money. So for free, we have a fully uh, functioning router. Um, so uh, with that having that said, um, I am just going to go ahead and do a basic configuration. First thing I'm going to do is give this a host name. So I'm going to type out enable and then I'm going to go into global mode configure terminal or short for it. Um, and if you saw that um, I just had an annoying message interruption. Um, as I was typing, I got like a status update. So I'm going to go into line console zero log and do logging synchronous. Now I won't get any of those. Well, I'll get some of the messages, but then I'll I'll get a new line. I'll be put in a new fresh line after the message is done. Okay. So, anyways, back to giving it a host name. I'm going to call it lab cube 01. And you can see that it went, the name just went from router to lab cube 01. Okay. And then I'm going to give it an IP address. Um, I think I actually got one from DHCP already, but I'm going to give it another one. So I'm going to exit uh, the global mode. And here's a command. Um, that will show me what interfaces I have available to give an IP address. So show IP interface brief. And you can see gigabit ethernet one did get a DHCP address of 10.0.0.183. Now that's not the IP address I want to give it. So I'm gonna go into that interface and change it. So once again, I first go into global configuration mode with conf t and then I'm going to go interface and you can press tab to finish a command um, and then if you're not sure what options are available you can press the question mark um, but that's not that's kind of out of the scope of this course but just some quick tips so interface gigabit ethernet and that was one so I'm going to give it an IP address of 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 10 and now it's going to want a um, uh, a mask as well so I'm going to give it 255.255.255.0 enter and it's going to hang for a second as it um, resets and it took it so that's good okay I'm going to exit that and then I am going to give this uh, a domain name that way I can um, create a crypto cert and be able to SSH to this and manage it that way which really becomes useful when you have to uh, paste in commands which will be coming in further videos okay um, that's not right I, oh, in any case so uh, I'm in the global configuration so I'm gonna go oh I did oh wait I did the wrong address. That I gave it the same address as my call manager. So I'm actually going to go back into the interface. IP address 10.0.0.21255.255. Yeah, good thing this isn't production. That would not have been great. Okay. Then I'm going to go back out. And then I'm going to give it that domain name I was talking about. So IP domain name... And I'm going to say uptime network and voice.com. And the reason I have to do that is because um, without the command, that command in there, this next one wouldn't work. So crypto key gener generate RSA. And I'll just do 1024. 
and it generated um, a, a certificate. Um, so now what I can do is I can enable SSH so that we can manage this via PuTTY. So I'm going to go to, well, first I need to create a username. So I'm going to username, and I'll say M Clayson privilege 15 secret Cisco. Very secret. Okay, and then I'm going to go into the VTY settings by entering line VTY 0, 4. And then use the command transport input SSH. And I will say login, oops, local. So that just means use the credentials that I just created, the M place in privilege 15. Now I'm going to enable some basic routing. So this needs to know how to get out to the internet. So right now, if I just go and um, try to ping Google, it's going to time out. Do, 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 do. Yep, no success. But now if I go back into a global configuration mode with conf t and use the command IP route, I'm gonna put the gateway. The gateway off the network in here. And so what this 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0, whatever, it's eight zeros. Um, um, make sure you have a space in between them. Like that. So it's actually two sets of four zeros. What that means is any IP address that you don't know about send to this address that I'm entering right now, which is my default gateway. Okay, so now I'm going to try to ping Google again. And I am pinging it, so we are good. Now to test the configuration, and we can SSH to it. I am actually going to PuTTY. I already have PuTTY installed on my computer. Um, if you don't have it, very easy to find. Just Google PuTTY and you'll find the installer. So I will go to 0.0.21. And I will accept that. And then I'm going to use those credentials I created. So M, Clayson, Cisco. And there I am. I am logged in. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this um, configuration. And let me just make sure I can ping my call manager server. Yes. Okay. So we are all set up for success for the next video, um, which is going to be actually getting our <coughs> cloud SIP trunk set up. So there are a couple companies um, that you can actually send all of your calls to from this voice gateway. So we're going to set up that account. And then after that, we're going to connect this new uh, virtual router to that account so that we can send all calls um, to that, uh, that cloud SIP trunk. And they will handle the routing from there. They'll afford it to your cell, cell phone or wherever else you need. Uh, and then after that, we will um, connect our call manager to this router as well. So um, call manager will, be, will send all outbound calls first to this uh, router. And then this router will send those calls to that cloud SIP service. So... Um, that's all for this video, but in the next video, I will walk you through actually setting up that account and then figuring the con uh, con finishing the configuration of this router um, so that we can start sending out calls uh, to the PSTN. Um, and I think that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If this has been helpful, please like and, subscri and subscribe so I can continue making these videos. Thanks.